This is Lee Irvin, who is famous. Are you famous or in, infamous? Maybe. Infamous. <laughs> infamous. <laughs> um, and so I would love to just ask my first question is why the ukulele? So you can talk a little bit about your programming and where you bring the ukulele, but I, I always wonder what made you, you know, drawn to the ukulele and what makes you want to share it with other people? Uh, good question. Excellent question, uh, Kate. Uh, I have played at various instruments uh, since probably Lincoln Junior High School in Portland. I started with the tuba, the great big honker of a tuba, Ohio State Marching Band tuba, and uh, did that uh, through during high school, uh, enjoyed it a lot, and then, you know, life goes on. And then I got back into music, started with, uh, restarted with the flute. I uh, did the flute, uh, classical guitar. Uh, about 35 years ago, so I picked up a la, 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 harmonica, and I love that, uh, and I still stay with that. And then I was doing the slide guitar because I have arthritic fingers. And I mean, you know, that, that's, that's the best I can do. If I get in a fight, it's like this. I can't bend, not that I get in a fight. But uh, so I said, let's do the slide guitar because you know, you, 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 you just got the, that little glass of tube. Wow, wow. So I started doing that, wow. And then literally I woke up one day and said, wait, 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 wait. Cause see, I didn't have to bend anything. I was just boom. I said, wait, just wait just a second. How many piano players do you know who complain about arthritis? I said, I, at the time, I didn't know any. Today, seven years later, I know one. But I said, maybe I'm doing it all wrong. Because I'm just, maybe now I'm, I'm freezing this finger because I'm not bending it. So I said, well, what, what, okay, you like the guitar, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Never heard of a ukulele other than Tiny Tim, which certainly killed it for me. Uh, never held one, never played one. I said, but you know, you know, my, my goodness, you know, hey, it's only got four strings. And look, wow, that's really, that's close. I think I can, re look at that, look, I can read. I was just thinking. So I started researching and online and finally, figured it out, that's what I want. And then uh, the, the last website I saw said, wait, you think you know everything about ukuleles? Wait for three weeks and then decide whether to get one. Well, I was an elementary school teacher at the time, co-teaching, and uh, three weeks to the day, little Maria walks in with a ukulele. I said, well, Maria, what, 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 what do you have that for? She says, well, I'm going to be in the talent contest. And I said, well, well could, I, could I hold it? <laughs> I never even held it. Could I hold it? Yeah, sure. School got out. 15 minutes later, I was down at Buck Dancer's Choice and bought my first of, let's just say, more than a few ukuleles. And that started, Kate, an amazing adventure. Uh, not only in music, because I've learned a lot more about um pa pa um pa pa than I did back then. The journey, the places I've gone, figuratively, spiritually, geographically, everything, the people I've met, never would have happened without the ukulele. And I'd like to think, with the ukulele and the various things that I and others have done out there, that we've touched other people as well and maybe inspired them so i'd like to talk about that sometime too i feel like i definitely understand what you're saying i started on piano well i started on drums as a kid which is much easier but then i i took piano lessons and when i tried to switch to guitar i had a lot of pain in my hand and still do because i have bad technique um but i find ukulele is great for offering to people who you know might have limited mobility or um, even just not being able to stretch their hand as far. And then also people who don't have as much musical training because the chords are a little bit easier to form for a beginner. So there's that part of it. But the thing that I haven't always loved about ukulele, and I'm fascinated to hear from you about this, is that, um, and it might be because of my limited skills on the instrument, 
but I feel like it's always happy. And so I wonder, because I know that you go into hospice and play there. And so I wonder how that kind of works um, mood wise mm -hmm. with what you're doing. Well, well, it's true. Uh, uh, meaning absolutely no disrespect to any clarinetists who are out there. If you bring out a clarinet and say, oh, here's a clarinet. Mm, oh, wow, that's nice. Yeah, that's great. You bring out a ukulele. <laughs> Look at that. that. Can I hold it? You know, it's like that. It, there's something about the instrument. And I think part of it is it is so portable. I mean, you, you know, you don't have to worry about, oh, my God, is that an expensive clarinet? Again, with all due respect. Uh, with a ukulele, it's pretty easy. Uh, and you know, without even having taken one lesson or a strum, it's pretty easy to play. So people want to hold it. And the first thing they do is whether they hold it right or wrong, doesn't matter. They start making music. If music is sound, they're making music. Uh, when uh, my dear friend Shannon Allen and I go into uh, Gosnell Hospice in Scarborough, uh, it's the reverse. Uh, we are not there to entertain. Uh, Shannon plays the cello. I play the ukulele. You say, what? Cello? Ukulele? It works. Uh, James Hill, one of the world's best ukulele players, and his wife, and she plays cello. He plays ukulele far better than anybody in the whole world. So it works. So when we go in there, we play soothing music, calm music. The staff breathes out. <sighs> They're relaxed. Uh, the ukulele I play has got a lower tone to it, has a low G, so it's not plinky plinky. It's blown blown. Uh, we have been asked on several occasions uh, to go into uh, rooms and these are people at the hospice, many of them, or some of them at, the, at any one time, are actively dying, which in hospice language means they don't have much, much longer. And we've been, I'm, I'm getting chills, I, I gotta tell you, and I may just boom. Uh, we go in and our hearts are beating so fast because we damn it all wanna do this right. And uh, we played for one fellow his father was dying. He asked us in, would we play? Usually it's a hymn, by the way. Uh, Walk of Ages, the old rugged cross. It's surprising, but it's, it's primarily hymns, which we didn't think at, at first. And you, you try not to look over because he is sobbing. Uh, you, you are starting to sob. I think the most dramatic, and every time we go, every time we go, there's something. So far, the most dramatic one is we were we play in the lounge. Lounge is not a cocktail lounge, but in the sitting area. And a woman came. She's in the late 40s, early 50s. And she stood by and was, do you mind if I sing? No, no, fine, fine. So we did our, we don't sing. I do this and Shannon does that. And she said, you know, that's, that's, that's my, my mother's favorite hymn. And uh, she's just down the hall. Uh, I used to sing that song, that hymn to her. Uh, would, could you go down and could you come into the room and play it and I can sing to my mother? He said, sure. We got down and the nurses, they're all, who, who doesn't love a hospice nurse? The nurse is very nice. He said, boys, would you mind playing just outside because she is, actively dying. Sure. So we stood outside. Daughter went in. Started playing. Could hear her sing. Uh, him ended. She walked back out and said, my mother hasn't moved a muscle, let alone a face muscle, for four days. And when I was singing that song, she smiled. Ukulele? Yeah. <laughs> you know, ukulele? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But it can do so many things, anywhere from free little birds to the old rugged claw. Uh, so, 
how did you kind of figure out if you started playing tuba, which is awesome, <laughs> and then you've you've become more of uh, on the therapeutic side of things. So did you discover that music was healing for you at some point and wanted to share it? Or did you just try something? And was it like the little girl with the ukulele that made you realize? Yeah, another good question, Kate. I, I found it, it, uh, it made me a better person, but it certainly uh, uh, promoted, provoked some creative juices that I didn't know I had. I didn't know I had. Uh, you know, uh, I used to be a lawyer. What, what, who's creative in the law? Well, there are actually, but but I just said, you know, my goodness, I can, uh, I you know, I I can just sit here with this, and I can. This is my my ukulele is here. The world. I, mean, I can sit here and go. Hey, what did I do? Kate, you know, I did nothing. <laughs> I did nothing. But I feel good having done that. I feel good having done it. So it made mm -hmm. me feel good. And uh, yeah, it made me feel good. And if it made me feel good, if, if I can teach, I've been a teacher all my life, various things. If I can teach a person, hey, can you move your thumb? Can you move it again? Can you go bump, bump, bump? How do you feel about that? And they'll go, wow. <laughs> That's pretty good. So they feel good. I feel good that they feel good. I mean, it's just a circular mm -hmm. thing. And with ukulele, seal the world, got to get the plug in. Uh, with friends of mine, we'd like to think we've touched so many people to make them happy. Yeah. And your teaching style, I've, I've had the pleasure of teaching with you a few times and it's so inviting and just engaging to people, you know, like they get, they get it so quickly and then they're like, Oh, I'm playing an instrument and it's so rewarding. Um, yeah. So tell me, uh, well, tell us the world a little bit about the organization because you have done a lot, you know, giving ukuleles to people and making sure they're, they know how to get started. So can we find your website somewhere and Yes, uh, oh, it, you, you'll find most of it, or probably all of it now, on uh, Facebook, Ukuleles Heal the World. If anybody wants uh, any more information, although that, that really covers a lot, you know, they can get in contact with me. Uh, but uh, it all started with, I, I, with friends, always, everything's a team effort, put together the first Casco Bay Uke Fest back about six years ago, now seven years ago. And I said, you know, let's use this ukulele festival, not only to ha have fun and help ukulele players, but let let's raise some money and uh, give some ukuleles away to deserving kids. Well, bam, we got the money. It, money comes rolling in. So we bought the kids, uh, uh, Amanda Panda, who, you know Amanda, uh, she identified uh, the people and spoke with the parents. She did everything very well. So we had about 12. 12. And so at the conclusion of the Uke Fest, uh, we gave each them. Well, this is great, okay? Now what? These were kids who are, don't have, didn't have all the advantages that their friends had, peers had. So a week later, I said, so what are they going to do? They've got these things with strings on them and, and wood. They, they have, they don't, what, what have we done? So I said, we got to teach them. We've got to teach them how to play. So that's what started uh, Ukuleles Heal the World. Uh, and in partnership with Learning Works, uh, both of Learning Works of Portland and Learning Works of South Portland, uh, I designed a program a uh, songbook, instruction book, uh, to teach kids. Uh, we use colored strings because sometimes in those ukulele camps, there's a uh, man or a woman, girl or boy, who doesn't speak English. But if I can model and say, hey, watch, put blue string, blue, 
rather than, uh, okay, let's go to the second fret and do the uh, A string, please. Uh, what the heck? <laughs> so that's, th this colors isn't just to make it pretty. These are IKEA strings for kids. And uh, you may be familiar with them. Okay. So uh, we put the book together. Uh, and I asked friends to help. Again, everything's a team effort. And uh, friends who played the ukulele would be very supportive. Uh, and in terms of the teaching style, Kate, these are kids who are third graders, fourth graders primarily because they have the fine motor development skills. I've done third graders and I've done second and first graders and it's fun, but we don't progress as far. Uh, but here's the, here's the key for me, two keys. And Kate, you talked about my uh, teaching style. Uh, it's engage them keep them energized, keep it moving. And ev this is so key, everything is a success. Everything is, a oh, I can't do this. What do you mean you can't do it? If you can't, you can do it, you just can't do it yet. I mean, and, you, and, and, and that's my style and they see right through me. They know immediately I'm not yelling at them. Uh, but here's another thing that, that, that I do, one finger one finger. The standard, the traditional way of teaching adults as well as uh, younger people, kids, 10, 9, 8 years old, is all right, eh, let's do, you know, the world famous C chord. You're going to do that with your ring finger here. Okay, now we're going to reach, oh, see, how, see, how, see how I did that? They, don't, they haven't a clue. See how I did that? That's the F. Can you see that now? I've got the F. All right, now look how easy the G is. And they're going, I've had it. So we, so I, I, I do this. Okay. Can you not pound a hammer, but can you pretend you got water on the tip of your finger and just kind of go like that? Now hit all the strength. Hey, you just played a C6, AMs, whatever you want to call it. Let's call it the C6 because it's less syllables. All right. Then it's one finger, one finger. All right, now we all know, well, some of us know, use your ring finger, this is the C, or use your pinky. We say pointer finger. Why? Everybody knows the pointer finger. They know the pointer finger before they know the index finger, before they know the first finger, pointer finger. Put it there. Now, hey, guess what? That's your second chord. You now know the C6 and the C. Got another one for you. Put it here. Whoa! You know, three chords. You know, the, the C6, the C, and the C7. And then, I'm giving all, the hardly secrets. If people want to use it, it's great. I say, okay, now you've been able to go like this. How about going like this? How about going like this? How about pick up and go here? Pick up, go here. Pick, okay. Now, you know what? I'm talking to the kiddos. That's the God awfully named F add nine. We're just going to call it the easy F or the F ish. I'm going to call it the F ish. Do this one finger, one finger, one finger, one finger. See all one finger. And I then the F ish. <laughs> the F ish. Yeah. The fish. Well, by the way, yeah. By the way, we have sung with the, with the C, with the C six, the C and the C seven. We have sung row, row, row your boat about 10 times. Uh, so they could be singing. Why? Everybody knows. Robert. And you're on your way to a Harry Nielsen song. With <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> uh, one of the happiest ones, uh, and I'll keep this short, is uh, Vets with Utes, which I started recently. Uh, I'm a combat veteran, but my experience in Vietnam was a drop in the bucket compared to these people. But uh, when I say these people, I say that very respectfully. These people have been through hell whether it's in Vietnam and the ones I'm working with now are mostly around Vietnam, but there are a couple of Iraqi men, women uh, veterans. These are uh, people who ha are using the services of the Portland Vet Center. Mm -hmm. So they have, you know, they're, they, they have burdens. They have crosses that they're bearing. Well, I said, let's bring some ukuleles to them. Well, as far as I understand, they've already earned their ukulele. So I drop off ukuleles to the Portland Bet Center. I was going to go there. Now it's all on Zoom. And weekly we get together and do the teaching 
and the learning. And uh, it, they're, I think they're, I know it. They're very happy they're doing this. And there's a psychologist who needs to be there because it's not the kind of music therapy by, by any imagination, which I so very much respect what you do, Kate. It's therapy all up here. So there's a psychologist who's there. And the VA classifies this as a therapy program. So that's been going on for several months. And uh, I'm really happy that that's awesome. been happy. Yeah. So I will post your website and... Um... Yeah, just thank you for chatting with me today.